Hello, Sepul Nation. Welcome to another Sepul Quarta. This is Sepul Quarta number 14. And first of all, we want to thank everyone that's been following Sepul Quarta and ask you before anything else to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like this video, and also share it with your friends. And today we have a very special guest here for our live QA and also for the live quarantine version, Devin Thousand. It will be with, with us here with uh, with Andreas and Derek, and you can also send your messages on the chat box. Also, use the super chat to have your questions highlighted here. And I'm gonna leave a quick message for the Brazilian audience right now. Olá, Cepu Nation. Bem-vindos a mais uma Cepu Quarta. Essa é Cepu Quarta número 14. E primeiramente quero agradecer todos que tem acompanhado a Sepul Quarta e pedir que antes de qualquer coisa vocês se inscrevam aqui no canal do Sepultura no YouTube, curtam esse vídeo e compartilhem com seus amigos. Temos um convidado muito especial aqui para as perguntas e respostas, né, para o nosso live Q&A, que é o Devin Thousand. E vocês podem mandar suas perguntas em inglês hoje, né, hoje o Q&A vai ser em inglês. Podem mandar suas perguntas. Mandem também superchats para ajudar na estrutura da Sepul Quarta e... Tem aqui o QR Code, para quem tiver dificuldade de usar o QR Code, tem um link também na descrição, para que vocês possam fazer suas doações para Santa Casa de BH. E as últimas doações não foram muito boas, então a gente pede a força de vocês aí nesse momento difícil para fazer mais doações aqui para as instituições que o Sepultura tem ajudado. So that's it. Let's start our Q&A right now the host has unmuted your mic all right yes. wow hi guys the crackhead <laughs> we are live What's hello up? world hello world how you all doing welcome to another sepul quarta uh i'm in sao paulo derek in la and devin <laughs> somewhere in canada i'm in vancouver <laughs> vancouver in... oh yeah Ooh. yes that would be the hollywood of the north is that what it is that's what they refer to it as. Oh my god, man! Okay, I'm no, I no longer want to be here. Uh, I've been here for my whole life, man. Like I know Vancouver is a city of uh, great studios, right? The ACDC and Metallica did like the Black Album and really great uh, work in Vancouver. Do you have what your it, own studio here, there? Yeah, I do, but it's it's you know it's where the prior tenants kept their lawnmowers. So it's like a studio <laughs> because I have a computer now, but I, you know, I've been working on it for years. Like, I think a lot of it for me as well is, uh, uh, the type of music that I've done and that we do obviously is, is still pretty niche. So as opposed to hiring producers, when I was younger, yeah. I just kept taking whatever budgets I had and, and just buying gear. It was cheaper nice. for me to learn how to do it than to like use the studios. But that being said, yeah, Vancouver's got the armory and uh, warehouse studios and a bunch of things, right? So I think it was the 80s with Bob Rock and uh, um, yeah, Bob that, Rock that scene, right? Yeah, yeah. What about down there? What about in Sao Paulo? Well, uh, we have some good studios here. Uh, lately in the late, last, I don't know, 20 years or so, uh, improved a lot. Mm. We have this a big studio, Nasena, which is pretty huge, like a big room to to shoot like even live dvds and orchestras and stuff is really nice yeah uh but other studios unfortunately uh closed down you know like uh, mosh no not mosh but uh mega studios oh yeah mix like two albums mm. and uh trauma studio change location and stuff but uh yeah we have some cool stuff in real real people place beautiful uh uh places and really well equipped as well so where do you stuff. live in la there derek are you uh i'm in the area it's pretty much like west hollywood close to the the grove oh. they call oh, it yeah. nice <laughs> um it's actually yeah. yeah it's so, very close to where uh notorious biggie smalls was uh gunned down actually the intersection it's very close wow. to my house. Yeah, that's like I think there's <laughs> just a for all those hip hop kids. Oh my God. Out there. <laughs> yeah, dude. There is actually nothing there. I, I was yeah. talking about this. You'll probably get defaced because as you know, Biggie is from the East Coast and it wasn't much love for him uh on the West Coast at the time. 
I'm going to yeah, go ahead so and say was, I didn't there's know. There's no plaque or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. He was from hey, the Denver. Denver. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, you know, I, I just want to say thank you for, for being here with us. You know, this is amazing, man. Vice uh, versa, man. I don't, I don't remember if I have the chance to meet you in person. Uh, I know Paolo did. But yeah. Uh, and uh, it's great that uh, to have this opportunity, you know, I mean, because we have to cancel all the shows, you know, the tours, we're supposed to be in Europe now in the summer, Same. you know, having the best uh, time of our lives. Is that what it was? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was an amazing, crazy schedule that we had, but, but we organize it all for next year. Who knows, you know, but, uh, Who knows? Yeah. but you know, we're doing this uh, Wednesday uh, every Wednesday, and uh, it's, it, it keeps us busy, you know, talking about the album and having these amazing opportunities to do some something that we, you know, we never really have the chance to do it. And, nope. um, and it's and fantastic, I, you know. You and I never met. I met Derek uh, and uh, Paulo, but I spent a lot of times with Borvoy uh, way oh. back in the day. Like, oh, uh, wow, and, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing pictures, uh, that somebody had drawn in the band. I don't know who it was. Um, Igor, and, was that who it was? And yeah, it was just, Igor, uh, our, yeah. uh, last drummer, uh, not last, but the first drummer was really, he is really an amazing artist. Yeah, very talented. You can draw anyone like yeah. in five minutes. It's amazing. I, I saw a picture years ago, and I think it was Metal Maniacs. We had drawn a picture of Borvoy with bombs heading towards. Him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it was doing it, it was doing the war. Uh, Borvoy is from uh, Serbia, you know, from Yugoslavia, the oh, yeah. old Yugoslavia. Yeah, and uh, we always joke that he he is uh, him and his away from. Oh, he's having a stroke. <laughs> yeah. And then he, you know, he he ended up in New York somehow. So yeah. uh, he's uh, Serbian. He, I thought it was is he, I thought he was Croatian. Is that uh, no? I think it's no, Serbian. It's, it's, Actually, uh, my mom. Serbia. Oh, okay. my mom is from Slovenia. You know, my okay. mom and my grandma is from Slovenia. I I I I have relatives there and stuff. And uh, mm. but uh, I, I I as far as I remember, I think Boriva was from from Serbia. Well, that that changed it because we were Serbia. young. Well, really? Because when we were younger, we used to yeah. call him the malevolent Croatian. Like that was his was... <laughs> malevolent Croatian. <laughs> that was his nickname, right? So, <laughs> that doesn't, it doesn't work anymore, man. <laughs> yeah, it was all it was all Yugoslavia anyway. So yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So but you yeah, guys... but... go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but Borivoy was one of a uh, uh, very important guy in our history. He he Same. was the one who really who signed Sepultura. You know, who <laughs> who really put like he has like a fanzine. Um, and he put a Sepultura on the cover. Was I think was the first time that Sepultura was really uh, commented outside Brazil and stuff, you know. And and our first tour we did in '89, we went to to Europe to open for Sodom, mm. and he came with us because we didn't know anything, you know. We didn't have a crew, we didn't have manager, we didn't have anything. We just have the tour and the support, a little support from Roadrunner. And he came with us and uh, he helped us a lot, you know, really to to start our first steps, you know, on, on the road and on, on the career, you know, so, but he's a pain in the ass, man. He's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> you know, all the respect to Borivoy and his help, but fuck, he's, it's like, uh, especially drunk, I mean, fuck. Oh, dude, it's the best. I, oh, man, I, 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 When I, I guess 97, when I was doing City, the Strapping a Lad stuff and the Ocean, Ocean, Machine, Ocean Machine album, I moved back down to LA and I stayed with him in Eula in Marina del Rey for like six months and just stayed on his couch. And dude, that guy, I love boy, man. Without, without him as well. I, he signed me too, man. And yeah, I remember, yeah. cause I think he managed, uh, Sepultura for a little while as well. Like, or at least that's what he claims. Right. Well, manager, but he did that kind of a job for us. You know, he, he helped us go, go there and here, oh, you have to go here and talk to these people and stuff. He was really, really guiding us on the on the early days, you know? and also calling you a dick, right? Like that's what oh, he yeah, did. Of course, <laughs> that's how he would roll. He'd be like, "I'm going to give you a great opportunity, you dick." <laughs> yeah, he has a very foul mouth. <laughs> oh my god, it's great. But now that he's like, you know, he's uh, he's last time I saw him, he's like, "Man, I just want to apologize for all that stuff." And then he had a couple of beers. He's like, "Yeah, you're a dick." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, get how did you guys meet? How did you guys meet, Andreas and Derek? Uh, me and Derek. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we were looking for a singer, when Max left the band in ninety end of ninety six, 
And the year of 97, right. we were just like as a trio, you know, trying to put everything together, looking for a new manager and, you know, uh, trying to, to get establish a communication with the label and everything. And, and actually one guy from Roadrunner that uh, was a friend in common, Mike Gitter. I don't yeah. know if you know him. Mike Gitter was the one who really mentioned Derek, you know, oh, uh, I know this guy and, uh, you know, I might, you know, do... He's a cool guy and stuff, and you know he's available. Yeah. So yeah, my, I mean, my favorite thing that he said to you was, "Oh, by the way, you know that he's black, right?" Oh shit! No! It's like, oh my god! Like, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> Call over. <laughs> you want no chocolate in your vanilla? <laughs> Dude, so I we sent say- him a, a tape, you know, of a song, and Derek did a good job. And then we, uh, he came down to Brazil, you know, it was an adventure for him, I, 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 I'm sure, <laughs> you know. And then he, we did some rehearsals here, and the connection was great, and um, still here with us. Yeah, I remember the first record uh, with Derek. I remember hearing the voice and just being like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and it's like, and when we were doing this, when we were when we were doing this uh, thing the uh, the other day, the the song, um, oh, yeah. and dude, I was trying to like, on one level, I'm thinking, okay, well, I should just try and match up. Uh, you know, I've been listening to the band for for years and years and years, so I should try and match it up. But then when I heard, I was like, I can't do that, man. You know, I'll just put on a <laughs> kitty cat shirt instead because I'm like, <laughs> I'm in an yeah. entirely different register. I'm like, I'm like, wow. Like, but that's I, why it works so good, man. Again, man. It's so what, cool what, to hear it again. I was like, wow, I really fell in love with it again. You know. So when was the song is, written? Awesome. That was written uh, around 2009, 2010, oh, okay. when we we signed with Nuclear Blast. You know, it was a really, a really important time for us too. You know, a new label, and oh, yeah. uh, uh, we did. Uh, Actually, we record here in Brazil at that studio, Trama. It mm. was great. Steve Evitz uh, produced the album. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, no, no. Kairos was uh, Roy Z. Sorry. Oh, no, no. That's what I had heard. Roy Z. That's yeah. what I had heard. Yeah, <laughs> we just sorry. Change, we keep changing it. <laughs> yeah, because we, did, rock, we, used sure. Steve, we used Steve Evitz before uh, the previous two albums. Oh, and then God. we worked with Roy Z, which was great. You know, he did an yeah. amazing job. And uh, it, 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 it is it is a little more trashy, trashier album, you know. We were more simpler. I, the one that I just started listening to, but because of Stanley, because he was so proud of it, um, a mutual friend was Alex. Yeah, yeah, he ah. he, he, he engineered and uh, uh, that album, Alex and Dante. We, we yeah. worked together those two albums. Yeah, it's and brutal. Stanley as well is um is a master, you know. Stanley oh, is dude. amazing. Dude, he also comes from Belo Horizonte, yeah. you know, from the same city as Sepultura, and um, yeah, he started working with us as well, and you know, now he, oh he, yeah, he's the best. He's there <laughs> at the top, yeah, yeah he's, he's the best amazing. for sure. Uh, he's he's amazing, always the best. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he, uh, absolutely incredible. He really is, man. It's like, like you say, he's a hard guy to keep a hold of, though, just because everybody, as soon as they hear it, they're just like, so who yeah. is that guy? And yeah. Like, you know one? You know one? Whatever. <laughs> Get your own guy. Where'd he go? <laughs> so, Devin, oh, we have a question here. What's up, Guilherme? You should work together in the future. Andreas and Derek, Quadra is a masterpiece. Devin, you ta- your talent surpasses mankind. Stay safe, guys. Wow. It's like... What, 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 what that means, surpasses mankind? It's like less than mankind. So it's like... <laughs> it's it's like for like Micronesia. <laughs> it's for Micronesia. <laughs> so we were talking... Hey, thank it's you. For that. We were talking before because uh, 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 Derek apparently has an encyclopedic knowledge of flags yes right yeah, so we're talking about micronesia and what micronesia yeah. as a country would be famous for or entail and we uh determined that it's just it's a country that's just full of people with like abnormally small knees right <laughs> and massive <laughs> upper bodies so like yeah. the strength distribution or the weight distribution is such that they constantly just have to drag themselves around by their fingers so the flag Derek was, I don't remember. Did you did you know? Or? Yeah, the flag, I, I do know the flag. And I, I just want to make sure that there's none 
in our audience now, you know, Micronesians. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, pissed off. <laughs> well, it kind of remind me, the, it kind of remind me the Monty Python, you know, the minister of the silly walk. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that, you know. The name, the name applies, though, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah. Devin, uh, oh. how how do how do you do? Did you start in music? How old how old uh, were you and and why? Yeah, was it like high school or did you have like battle of the bands or? Did yeah, I did, man. I remember like uh, fast forwarding a touch to my first air band competition where we did the Right to Rock by Keel, and All uh, right, <laughs> yeah, man, and uh, wow. but the band who won they had a Kiss logo they had drilled out of a piece of plywood and they had one of their buddies sitting behind it with a flashlight doing the kiss thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I Amazing. also remember, uh, uh, rehearsing for that keel song and jumping on my mom's exercise trampoline and smacking my head on the garage roof. And I think at that point I realized that, uh, music was the way for me. I probably started <laughs> when I was eight or nine. I'm 48 now. Oh, wow. So, uh, uh, you know, I just had a, a musical family and a piano in the house. And I found that, Probably the easiest way for me to describe it is that, you know, there's a there's a certain lineage in my family of keeping a uh, stiff upper lip when it comes to emotional things. So we tend to be sort of closed off maybe emotionally, but music became this loophole for someone like myself who is uh, probably uh, arguably too emotional to find an avenue that was socially acceptable to let that out. And so I just became enamored with the idea of, of expressing myself through, through music. Right. And, Fantastic, uh, yeah. throughout my teen awesome. years, you know, choir or, or, or band or, or, right. and a lot of it was seventies musicals, to be honest, like all that, you know, stuff that's really yeah. cringy now, but all that. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> right? You gotta have some old footage of that. Dude. I, well, I just, I don't know. It was like broad strokes of emotion. Bruno, easy some to stuff. understand. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we could do oh, between the three of us. We could just do a remake of some 70s music. You know, wow, like yeah. you could do, I don't know, Fiddle Around the Roof yeah. or something. <laughs> so, Brazilian friends, colaborem aqui. Santa Casa de Belo Horizonte. É, vamos ajudar aí, galera. Que estamos passando ainda por um período muito difícil. BH está num período difícil. O Brasil está num período difícil. Ó, que QR Code aí, colabore. Santa Casa de BH. Vamos ajudar aí, certo? Right, Devin? Absolutely. In fact, got that, man. I, you got to help them out, man. I, I, yeah. thought, I was about to say that your, your past participle there was, was a little off. We're going to have to. Oh, gosh, that was terrible. I'm going to stop trying to make jokes now and just. Do you speak French as well? Yeah, as a Canadian? Oh, we got... uh, un petit peu. Oh, he's on... That's the other side. <laughs> un peu. Yeah, un peu. Exactly. What's okay, the first... He's in the Hollywood. You know, I've got a lot of favorite uh, Sepultura songs. The one that actually hit me the most of my memory was the first song on the first album that Derek did. Da, 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 I blew it. Da, 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 I blew it. Yeah. Yeah. That song. That song. That's the one that I remember yeah. hearing at first and just That's being cool, like, man. Yeah, it really was. It That's really the was. first song that we worked together as a band, you know, in a in a room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When Derek came on those rehearsals uh, trials, you know, that he came to the, the US to spend like two weeks with us here. Mm. And uh, terrifying. And the first <laughs> week, yeah, the first week was horrible, you know, it was, it was really horrible. horrible. Was like, Nothing happened. Really? And then Derek went to the weekend yeah. with Paulo to the oh, beach yeah. and they drank and, you know, whatever they did. And on Monday, they came back and we kind of wrote against like instantly, you know, it was really yeah. amazing. Uh, that's cool. You know, the connection it was kind it was of really intimidating because cool. I was stepping, in, stepping into that room. Yeah. And, you know, even they were just like messing around and playing. And then when they were like, okay, we're going to play like a new song. And I'd heard the demos and then hearing it live with them together and like the energy in the room, I was just like, holy shit, like I'm yeah. really here, you know, like, yeah. this is yeah. really happening. Really nice. You know, and it was like, so heavy and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm a little bit intimidated. Like, and then realizing, you know, like, you know what, I'm here for a reason. You know, I came all the way down to Brazil. I, I better put myself out there, you know, it's the one chance. So, Well, it's interesting too, because that song had an energy about it that seemed um, new as well for the right. band you know they, it had a momentum yeah. to it that was you know that kind of more hardcore kind of vibe you know that yeah you know, like punky hardcore vibe yeah, like yeah. really angry aggressive yeah. 
Yeah. Raw. I loved it too because it was short. You know what I mean? It yeah. was like it was like one of those songs where it's like you could just listen to it over and over. But strangely, that was the one too that um uh, because of course, you know, I was familiar with the band, I'd seen a bunch of shows, I'd seen you guys God, that first first time I saw it was like Clutch and Fear Factory years ago back in Vancouver wow. as well, right? Wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and it was like, but that was that was the, the song that I remember just being like going back to and back to, and still do, right? So that's my favorite. Nice. Yeah. Renato Timbó Dias Machado. Valeu, Renato. What are the odds on Sepultura and Devin making gigs together here in Brazil? We need you, Devin. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I hope so, man. I, I hope so. It's funny. It's yeah. like um, I've been trying to get to Brazil for years, years, but I either, you know, there's, there's, uh, because I haven't been there, maybe there's a, a, a certain, a certain uh, risk financially that a promoter would have to, to take that we haven't found anybody willing to do yet. But um, the How reason why I haven't been there, well, the, I'd, I'd love to, man. I'd yeah, love it to. makes sense when you come down and you do Argentina and Chile and Colombia. Yeah. You know, you do the whole run, and then all the promoters really benefit from that. You know, like plane tickets and all that stuff. You know, yeah, so. I would love to. I did. We did one show in Chile, and uh, I, it was some festival. It was it was great, man. And it was like yeah. really hot. <laughs> oh yeah, really yeah. hot. You know, it's like surgically remove my you ever had a thought that you're just like you know just don't say that <laughs> that, just happened. that just happened no i would love to go man but up at this point i haven't had any offers but i mean yeah dude i'll i'll come down and uh i'll come down and and, and tech let's man. work on it man i mean uh 2021 to. we have the rock and rio festival no which is uh, also a great possibility All right. you know, love to, man. to, to bring and Let's work on it. Oh, I'd love to. True. And talking about Rock and Rio, we did a, a show in a Rock and Rio Las Vegas together with Steve, Steve I Vai. That. I saw that. Uh, it was, oh man, it was so cool, you know, to, to have him working with us. And tell us a little bit, you know, how was to work yeah, with that master. Stories. <laughs> well, uh, Steve is, is I mean, we've known each other for 30 years now, and he's one of my closest friends in terms of not only this industry because it's hard to actually have legitimate relationships with people yeah. because a lot of it is based on you know just scene points or what have you but when you do meet people that you enjoy the company of and you've got some things in line you know personally or spiritually or or whatever it's like you hold on to them right and like any good relationship steve and i have gone through a bunch of ups and downs uh, a lot of that stemming from the fact that when I first met him, he was 34 and a rock star and I was 19 and an asshole. And I think the, <laughs> the combination. Wow, 19, yeah. 19, wow, very young. <laughs> yeah, dude. And you were so, singing for him. So what? Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was probably very similar to your experience with, with the band when you, when you came down there, you're like, man, this has mm -hmm. got this whole lineage of, right. of history behind it that, Frankly, in, in, in the case with me and Steve, he was a guitar virtuoso and still is, of course. But I mean, the, the desire that the audience had to hear some 19 year old kids shrieking over his guitar stuff was like pretty small. Right. So I think <laughs> at that time when I did that record, uh, you know, it was being produced by him and his lyrics and all this. And it turned out well. But the reaction to it was oh, his lyrics as well. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, there's there's uh since that point it's been um very much you know i don't want to sing other people's things it's just yeah, you know it's yeah. a hang up right but uh but uh when i when that situation happened it was it was antagonistic from the audience's side for sure and uh when i left that i went and joined a band in the uk called the wild hearts which were a brilliant band but also just joining another person's band and so when i finally started doing my own music with strapping it was just all fuck you the whole thing was just fuck you and uh now at 48 people are like you should say fuck you again i'm like nah <laughs> no i did that <laughs> i did that done that <laughs> i just want to go to the beach <laughs> That's cool. yeah but and tell me your, to fuck up I just and use your beautiful up. cat shirt She's see awesome. i got yeah this is it, man it was like when i heard derek's voice on the recording i'm like dude I, <laughs> you know, all i could bring to the table at this point in i terms was so jealous i was like Seriously, like online, like where can I order this shirt? Dude, I, okay, I got this. <laughs> a buddy of serious. Said, hey, this is where he got it. A buddy, so it's, it's more like in Indo Indonesian style too. 
Oh yeah, the quality. Yeah, it kind of has that vibe. The quality of this is like, uh, you know, one wash is like what the recommendation is for it, right? <laughs> but I think, uh, <laughs> I think he, uh, a buddy of mine is is uh, Marcus Reuter, who played guitar in the last uh, thing that we did in Europe. There, um, we uh, all wore Hawaiian shirts on the last tour because, eh, why not? Fuck it. And um, he was like, dude, the worst one I've ever seen was the Taco Cat. And for my birthday last month, it showed up in the mail. And I'm just like, can't get enough of it, man. Like, my wife, my kid, everybody hates the shirt. Dude, they're just like, that is the worst oh, fucking I it. <laughs> Why would you not wear it? I've been like, what's it, what's your reaction? I'm just like, oh, you mean this shirt? This yeah. is the worst? <laughs> it's crazy. It's great, man. Dirceu Lara. <clears throat> Valeu, Dirceu. Wow, I- both of you guys have done fantastic work with producer Jens Bogren. Did that help knowing each other's work better, having Jens doing this bridge? Brazil yeah. still waiting for you, Devin. I'm, I'm still waiting for Brazil, just so we're clear. This is not a decision on my <laughs> it part. It will happen. It will happen. We'll, <laughs> we'll make sure it will happen. So Jens, yeah, yes. I did deconstruction with Jens, and you guys did a bunch. I love Jens. He's brilliant. The only thing I didn't like yeah. is that I, I stayed there and he worked at 7 a.m. till 4 and I had nothing to do after that. Yeah. So yeah. I just sat in his little right. thing there like watching shitty Swedish game shows and beating yeah. off, right? Yeah. Like it was like, <laughs> no, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was. I hope it wasn't my room, <laughs> dude. I was. <laughs> and where does Derek sleep? Is he upstairs. All right. <laughs> yeah, here it is. It, it was brilliant, dude. But it's just like, but like, were maybe, you there in the summer or winter? Oh, winter. There was like oh forty feet of snow, oh, dude. My it was oh my god! Because just, I was, I was yeah. about to say, because we 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 spend our time on the summer there, not summer, but like May and August, man. We did yeah. one in May and the other one in August. And uh, so we could, you know, run and at least have a bicycle and stuff and do stuff. But in the winter, I mean, yeah. no way. Nope, dude. It was, yeah. we were, it was like December, January, or something. Oh. It was 40 below. There was like, you know, 18 meters of snow and, you know, wolves and, or whatever. Just like you couldn't leave the room, basically. It's like one of those things where if you oh take a God. piss, it freezes up into your bladder or whatever the, the thing is. Right. And I, uh, and so I just sat there and I, he would start working at seven and then be done at four. And, yeah. you know, and I'm like, dude, I, I'm like, what do I do now? And it was just there for weeks. And so by the, by the end, I remember getting so frustrated. And, uh, and see, I was thinking the other day, I, I have this tendency of just, you know, if I'm not careful, if I don't keep myself in check of just being like passive aggressive, douche right and i remember one of the things i was just i was like dude i just can't by the time four o'clock rolls around i'm just getting going and you're done and i don't know what to do so finally we were recording this thing and the album deconstruction we did was super complicated it was like orchestras and tons and tons of drummers it was like a gong show i was like yes i need to do something quick 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 he's like dude i i'm not set up to do it i'm like i just need a microphone just give me a microphone and and he's like scrambling. I'm like, dude, I'm going to lose the idea unless you get the microphone in. So he's plugging it in. He's like, should it be stereo? Should I have effect? I'm like, dude, I just got to get this out. So we finally plugged it in. And he's like, what track should I put it on? I'm like, just put it on any track. He set up a track. I grabbed the mic and I was like, balls. And he's just looking at me like. <laughs> awesome. He deserves it. <laughs> Oh yeah, totally oh, deserves it. Well, because it's so fastidious, you know. His recording was just like, I want to have the levels optimum. I want to do this, and I'm just like, dude, I just want to, I just want to scream for a minute, just like, you know what I mean? But he's fantastic. He's a fantastic Beautiful. producer. I knew him before he had the heavy metal beard. You know, he was like, he was like oh, very, wow. clean. he was very clean, man, he very clean. And last picture I saw of him, I'm like, that's not the same guy. Come on, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> like dark. <laughs> Guilherme Fontana. Oh, Guilherme. Wow, I forgot to say that Edit is a masterpiece as well. That was my first contact with Devin's music. I love it. Thank you. And what was that? How do you pronounce that name? Did you say it? You said it in a way that seems... Guilherme. 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 You speak Portuguese too, don't you, Derek? Um pouco. Yes. Really? Um yes. <laughs> Anderson <laughs> Jr. Devin, you are one of my main inspirations to be a better guitar player and a human being. Loved your podcast and hey, open C tune is the best Brazilian fan here. Alil Vanderson. 
I like how the <laughs> comma there implied that break too. And hey, yeah, hey, <laughs> that was awesome, Brandon. That was very good. Yeah, open C tuning. <laughs> open C tuning. Everybody. I love, I love people <laughs> typing in English. Yeah, not so I, uh, easy to type in English. You know, if you're. Oh yeah, no, I I uh, um, uh, I appreciate the the compliment. I mean. I'm sure it's the same with you guys to a certain extent as well. I've just, I've been so, well, maybe not, but I've been so up my, my ass for so long, just in terms of doing what I do. I don't really think about the fact that other people participate in it. When I do, it often makes it more difficult because then I second guess it. Like my, my uh, process of just being like, I'm just going to fucking write yeah. because I, I want to write. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And then as soon but as you just, Emma, that's pure expression, it's mm -hmm. pure expression, man. You know, it's like, this is something that is really, really harder by the day, you know, because you cannot really express anything anymore. You know, you always have to police yourself uh, in expressions that are not used anymore and stuff. And, you know, it, it's really, really hard. Uh, but artistically, we have this tool, which is art, you know, really to do that, you know. And, uh, and that's very liberating for sure. Well, Derek and I were talking even about the song Mask prior to doing this because we were yeah. both thinking, oh my god this is a song that was written years ago about a political mask yeah right and then yeah or we're just thinking, people like politicians that hide behind their their masks their facade totally you know, there's so many politicians out there that's what they they do you know all of them you know they're really we're hard thinking to, going into this are anybody gonna is anybody gonna have their shit in a knot about thinking that we're trying to make a a statement about not wearing a mask at this particular point yeah. and it's like it's not about that it's not so just it's just yeah, it's so definitely not about that yeah exactly <laughs> it's like keep yeah. your goddamn mask on at the complete opposite but i mean it's exactly. just like that you know no, it's, it's a good it's point <laughs> it's a good point you know like, like isolation we wrote that song it has nothing to do without being people are like oh man i can really identify with that song and i was like song is really i i get it you know your your interpretation but it's really written about, you know, political injustice of people being put in uh, solitary confinement and how inhumane that is, you know, and, and how horrible it is. But maybe people can understand that more from being isolated, <laughs> being away, being, you know, from family and everyone in contact can understand that how inhumane it is. You know, I, I think that, you know, it evolved into something like that. But Yeah, but somehow we, we are kind of feeling that, you know, we have a political... Yeah. Exactly. convicted political you know prisoners here in brazil at home you know because of the the, the virus yeah. or whatever reason of oh, obvious corpus and all that shit you know so they are they're arrested but at home but it's the same as us you know free people <laughs> that are you know kind of <laughs> you know leaving this uh endless quarantine you know it seems like yeah. well, a question, a question seems for great. you then derek in terms of lyrics like what's your view on accountability like as a lyricist, when you're writing, yeah, you know, when you're writing lyrics, I mean, it's it's like Andreas was saying. I mean, you kind of have to really check yourself. Go on. Yeah, I, I have to take into account that this is going to go out to a lot of different people, totally. and and they're going to have their their interpretations, which is fine. You know, I I, I love hearing other people's interpretations, but um, you know, a lot of times I really need to have that freedom though you know i definitely don't want to lose that you know i wanted to write songs about uh depression i wanted to write songs about things that really touch home about addiction you know things that are just like mm, maybe you know go deep inside myself and not be afraid to really talk about those things so um it's always got to come from the heart you know when you're writing especially lyrics you know that believability is so important as a lyricist you know you want to be heard and you want to be believed in what you're saying the reason I ask is knowing about the um, the the documentary series that you and Tanya are doing, and how much mm -hmm. of that plays into, you know, maybe personal accountability on on some level as well, right? I think that it's just like you say, though it's 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 at a, a time here where we've got a lot of people who are angry and bored, who are looking for yeah. opportunities to sort of latch on or hang their their coat on any thing that can suit or give an outlet to that. But I think at the same time, it's also gotten to the point where you have to second guess singing a, a, an older song like Mask or Isolation, right? you know, based on the fact that you don't want to be misinterpreted, which is fair enough because now everybody has a voice. 
but like you just said as well, which I think is really important is I think if you're keeping yourself in check and your motivations in check as to, Hey, this is not what I'm saying. This is not what I'm writing it about. Yeah. And if people are using your work as an opportunity to say something or use it as a, a soundtrack for something that you don't agree with. I mean, at that point, I think you have a, uh, a reason to say something, but other than that, man, yeah, you gotta be true to yourself. Right. But I agree. And, and what you're saying about this emptiness of like people trying to latch on to something, I think, especially now, you know, when there's, it's difficult to see an outlook of what's going to happen. You know, people are latch on to a lot of conspiracies and, mm -hmm. and different things that are very scary and dangerous nowadays, you know, because they have this feeling of helplessness and disbelief of something mm -hmm. so big is happening. You know, something so massive could happen, like a pandemic, you know? So in their mind, it's like, oh, it's got to be something else, you know, where, you know, they start thinking, you know, of course, all these ideas come into play and it's dangerous, especially with the internet, because people are putting out their crazy, insecure thoughts with no facts backing it up, mm. you know? And that's, that's a scary thing, you know? I think the problem with the internet is that people are certain of what they are saying. And that's the danger of it, you know? Right. Expressing an opinion yeah, is not right. necessarily means that you are certain about that. You have some doubts, you know. Right. You need to listen to different people and different points of views and, and different perspective on things, you know. Totally. I mean, Brazil, you're right. you're you are in the States and in Canada. We have different perspectives about the, the pandemic and, and different things, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's not because we have different perspectives that, you know, we, we're right and we have to defend this as a as a fact or or as the the only truth you know so that's the problem internet you know people say something or we say something and we you know we are received with rocks and and, and missiles you know and aggress aggr you know aggressiveness and and you know curses and all that crap you know and uh and it's really hard to have a conversation you know really to to explain yeah. or to to listen to people that lack of dialogue i think yeah, is listen, often listen, where listen, where right. the the problem lies because if you have people with divergent points of view a lot of times um it comes down to if you're in a conversation with it's just like i clearly don't understand so the dialogue should be about please tell me the ways in which yeah, yeah. this isn't why well, yeah why do you think that this is happening right. why don't i why where don't it comes i understand from? Why don't I understand? Where does my lack of information yeah. stem from, right? But right. I don't know. I just want to say it. But you definitely need people that are going to listen, too. You know, totally. It's important. Well, totally. And, and, and rationally as well, because even a lot of these things, right. there's they're such a, a heated um, point of debate. Like any of these, any of these conversations yeah. that come up that it's so hard to not be emotionally invested exactly. in it, specifically if yeah. you're coming at it with some sort of bias, right? You know, like... Yeah. Yeah. I often think about when it comes down to things politically or any of these real hot topic things, how much of that and how much of the emotional content of that is tied into like moments of significance when you're younger. Like, you know, my, my grandfather who thought this, I had a wonderful Christmas with them. Therefore I'm emotionally tied to this particular. Exactly. You know exactly. I, mean? I don't know, dude. That's, that's what we, we talked about on Quadra, you know, this set of rules, you know, that we, we learn in school or at home or in history books and, and movies and stuff, you know, and, and each one of us, we have a different interpretation. And, and the danger is that we take, some people take this interpretation as, a, as the, the truth, you know, as the only truth, you know, this yeah. is the way I see it. And this is the way it is. Fuck the rest, you know. Um, a lot of that's fear though, I think. Just in yeah, general, yeah. Right? Fear yeah. To, to try to, to dissolve his own word or our own world. Well, you know, if your identity is so heavily you. invested in what you believe, any yeah. anything yeah. that goes against it is is yeah. like an affront to your your you feel meaning. out of place, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Igor is tatonato. How are you, Igor? I just wanted to say that in in fact, impact. It's yeah. my favorite record of 2019. Thank you so much to Devin and Sepultura for all the amazing stuff you were pulling out during quarantine. Love you guys. Thank you, Igor. Thank you, Igor, very much. All right, Rafaela you go. Go. Hey, Rafaela. Hi, Devin, Derek, and Andreas. I'm a Devin's huge fan, and so, I wish he could play in Brazil. My question is, why in general is back, his backing vocals have been women? You were awesome, guys. Thank you. I have a Thank high you, voice. Rafaela. That's it. <laughs> no, I... Uh... I okay. Why do I use um, a lot of women for my backing vocals? Well, I mean, 
think women are awesome for one. I had a strong mother and a strong sister, a strong wife. It's like, I f and that's the energy that I can't do. Like, it's not what I do. I don't bring that to the table. And when I'm writing, I want it to Great. be from the point of view of humans. Right. And there's no real, uh, you know, Gender. it's like, yeah, but I can't, I can't sing like the other side of the, of the equation. So I, I appreciate plus man, when I was 15 years old, I loved Enya, just loved the album <laughs> Watermark by Enya. That was like one of those defining records, like King's X, Gretchen Goes to Nebraska, um, uh, Watermark, Hysteria, oh, Ride the Lightning, like all these albums, and then a bunch of new age stuff. It all kind of conglomerated into one, you know, it looks like this shirt basically is what it ends up sounding like. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Enya was just such a big deal to me that when I got, I remember talking to the first producer that I tried to work with years ago. And they're like, well, what's your vision for your music? I'm like, okay, I want it to be like Ride the Lightning and Watermark with Def Leppard in there. And he was Beautiful. like, yeah, no. I was like, oh, right. hey, we could put some, no. West Side, <laughs> some West Side Story in there too. That'd be great. Man. So for me, like, I just, I love the sound of, of like women's voices. I just, I just, and it's like people tend to be really critical now of course they're just like dude you got all these choirs on there i'm like yeah, i don't know what to tell you i think it's fucking great so eat a dick <laughs> you know <laughs> perfect <laughs> Fala, Bruno. Yeah, yeah uh oh the talking logo is here logo is <laughs> back <laughs> Hello, yeah, it's like, tour. It's like hell, Welcome. you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't think we can keep this going, Derek. <laughs> and right now we're gonna just talk a little bit about our stores, like our official stores worldwide. Why you guys take open the pod bay door, Sepultura? Water, you know, and so some water. <laughs> we're not talking about our simple store. You just go to sepultura.com.br slash sepulquarta. You have all the links related to Sepultura. And also you have uh, all the videos that we that we have for today. And here you have uh, some of our merchandising. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> she's pissed. Yes. She's not stoked. She's angry. Yeah, which is happy with the new simple tour shirt. Wow, confused. He's so confused. He's like, Oh, this I, is a hoodie? It's really I, warm. This is a hoodie. This is extremely warm. This this is like, and I feel sure? very content. <laughs> Can I put on shorts at least? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lines, and then you have like the merchandise for US. <laughs> the invisible man line. <laughs> He's in there. <laughs> Go on. Bruno, keep, 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 keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> Wow, <Next. laughs> I got nothing for this one. It was just a tiny yeah. person in there. He's just like right in the middle from Micronesia. Joy for love, yeah. <laughs> so Micronesia can like buy from our simple store a new app. And then it's you true. have right simplestore.com.br. That's our official here in Brazil. Yeah. Então aqui no Brasil nós temos novidades da loja do Sepultura. Então tem chegou o moletom é, e várias né, modelos do do quadra. Nós temos aí também tem a camiseta Stay Safe in Your Quadra. É, tá na Sepulstore, sepulstore.com.br. Você tem tudo do Sepultura lá. Stay safe e, in your quadra. Yeah, stay safe in your quadra, there. Stay Right, yeah. quarter is a ripping record, by the way, guys. That thing is like Thank on you, point, man. man. Thank you, man. Right, Dude. Okay. yeah, man. It's like I was exhausted, like a couple. Of <laughs> <laughs> I, I was listening to it, it was like three weeks ago, and I went to a I had to wash my car, and so I, I put it on while I was washing the car, and the car was really clean by the time it was nice. done. <laughs> that was the whole purpose oh, of that album. <laughs> those car so Devin, yeah, what, what are you like, doing uh, what are you doing now during quarantine you know oh, you, you had to cancel gosh. shows as well right yeah tours? yeah i lost but a year's worth of shows yeah, uh really. and i probably the same with you guys you keep getting the mails from management like so we're we're looking at rebooking for august and i'm like good luck right on yeah. Let me yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Don't put any money on it first, though, right? But I know I lost a, a ton of touring. Um, but since it's been home, it's uh, it's been home. Since I've been home, I've been working on a lot of things that I've 
you know, it's one of those things where I'm away. I'm like, I can't wait to get home so I can just work. Mm -hmm. So I've been taking advantage of that, to be honest. And I've been doing ambient guitar albums and a podcast. And I did uh, an album's worth of quarantine songs. I did three concerts for uh, medical. Um, we raised a, like $190,000 dollars for three nice. separate hospitals and wow, uh that's awesome i've finished a dvd uh, i start another one tomorrow we're doing another three streaming concerts one of which is on a green screen with like a bunch of players from around the country um uh, i've got a record i'm working on uh mowed the lawn you know what i mean it's like everything is kind of all happening at the same time we got this dog who's a fucking banana and it's like <laughs> i can't uh I, I didn't realize because I've been married now 30 years and, you know, kids and the whole works, but I've not been home for much of it. So now that I'm home, I realize one, I got no jurisdiction around the house. Oh, yeah. Like, right. You know, I come home yeah. and they're just like, it's like you've got. It's like, you know, what are you doing here? <laughs> it's like you got the cat or no, you got the, you know, your, your, your kids and then your wife and then the pet. <laughs> and then there's like the good cutlery. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then somewhere down the list is like you. And then you're, you know, you're just like, and you're like, what the fuck? And then the dog is always going bananas. And I had never, I've not been around the pets long enough to really recognize the nature of our pets. I always thought, oh, you're like, little, it's like a bulldog. He's like, he's cool. Right. But I'm just like, wow, he's fucking loud all the time, all the time. I'm, and I, and I find myself like looking at him, like, why do you need to, why though? Why, you know, like, <laughs> like a, a bee landed on a stick three blocks away and he just like explodes <laughs> and fucking does backflips. And I'm just like, Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> that's what I've been doing. That's perfect. That's a, that's a perfect example, man. I, I identify with that totally, you know, totally. being at home with the, the pets and everything. <laughs> it's like, your kids it's a perfect out. description. <laughs> your kids don't live at home though anymore. Do they? Oh yes, they do. Oh. <laughs> It's just like, anyway, we are, we are a big family. <laughs> oh, good. And you, you, your, your kids at home too. You're, you're, you say your kids 11 there, Derek, right? Uh, now he lives in, in Czech Republic where oh. they're running free now, you know, oh, damn. Not, not under the, the pandemic terror that's going on here, <laughs> oh, uh, but I have two rooms and, uh, and I have, uh, some neighbors downstairs that are, uh, quite, quite loud. And, and the dog thing, I definitely get because that dog, anything moves, it's just. Rub, 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 rub. It's like, especially when it's like time to record. Like, let me Dude. just. Yeah, we're oh, coming yeah, outside. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I'm just like, ah. You, you know, I find the hardest thing about recording too is it's like a million degrees and I got this shitty little air conditioner that I have to turn on <laughs> just to kind of keep it going. So, like 40% of my recordings recently, if I solo the vocals in the back, it's. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, the, is the new thing oh, new thing in recordings oh god uh, oh, yeah. jesse capo <laughs> hey jesse how you doing man in 2017 in cleveland at the agora no. and four days later saw devin at the house of blues in cleveland looking forward to getting to seeing the shows postponed for this past spring yeah, yeah. man me too thanks much jesse love. yeah i know yeah. much love is that oh, the cat nice cat isn't the Cleveland? Isn't that the the House of Stairs? Isn't that House of the Blues the one with all those stairs? Is that the one I'm thinking? No. You know what? Cleveland. I've never been to the House of Blues in Cleveland. We've never played. We, never we were supposed there. to play there this year. No, oh no no! Really, yeah. I'm thinking Chicago, where it's just like 15 flights ah, of stairs. Dude, sucks. It's you're just like, oh, I left my thing yeah. down on the bus, and you're like, ah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm not gonna need it. <laughs> hey, Devin, uh, talking about venues, man, how is it to play at the Royal Albert Hall, man? It, it must be something. I mean, I, I never, I never been there, but I saw like many different videos from shows and Cream, you know, like George yeah. Harrison and all that stuff. I mean, it, it is an iconic place, right? Well, okay. So how was it? Uh, okay. Well, number one, I can't see shit without my glasses. So it was a bunch of bunch of humans but oh man but two you know it's beautiful it's beautiful <laughs> but but here's the thing is it's like for that show i had um a bunch of big foam rubber like uh ball sacks that i had running across the stage and they had these canisters of co2 that made them fart right so <laughs> so before we did it 
I we had to have a meeting with the Royal Albert Hall, of which they've had meetings with all these iconic artists, you know, like your George Harrisons and your Eric Clapton's and all this. And we had to sit down and say, listen, wow. so our farting ball sacks have a regulated type of CO2. <laughs> and so we had to get this like we had to get this OK from them so we could like have these these dudes in leotards with these huge nut sacks, like run across the stage with like smoke coming out of their ass. Right. So. Um, so I thought that was fucking really funny. And, uh, uh, but other than that, yeah, man, I mean, it was great. It's great. My mom and dad were there and, um, it's my awesome, voice, man. It's, my it's voice just... almost didn't suck that night. Derek, you know, that uh, feeling where you're just like, wow, I almost pulled it off tonight. Hooray. This is great. I am on Kawa. This was the best simple store break ever. Devin, so funny. Mm. Devin, you, you're hired. Every every break. Yeah, dude, <laughs> you got to wait for the show, though. <laughs> when I was, like, I, we were talking about when we did the performance for Mask. I When I saw your guys, I was like, wait, everybody stood up. I feel like a yeah. chump. <laughs> I'm like sitting in my stupid fucking cat shirt. I'm just like, no, it's not cool, man. Nah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> All right. That was very cool. All right. <laughs> uh 82 habal thanks for the great music it helped me with my struggles devin is stagnant about the constant mood change of depression uh would you produce a sepultura record <laughs> wow that's a good that's a good wow. possibility yeah, dude, of course wow. that'd be great and the only I, thing is i'd have to have this shirt that's you know, like dude come to vancouver dude yes yeah. so much fucking fun awesome. oh yeah, yeah. that'd be amazing um as stagnant uh i don't remember that was years ago and i think i was probably really high i think it was um uh <laughs> there was i think at that particular point in my life yeah depression was was uh, a big thing but it was also weirdly prior to having kids and i'm sure you guys feel the same way once you have kids you realize how much shit you let yourself get away with prior you know it's like i remember thinking before we had kids i'm like oh, i can't do plumbing there's no way you know, I'm incapable of doing <laughs> yeah. plumbing. And all of a sudden you have a kid and you're like, yeah, but the sink needs being fixed. So I don't know what to tell you. And you're like, well, I guess I know how to plumb now. Right. And I, uh, I think that in a way, there's like this sense of like with depression, a lot of the sort of uh, things that I had engaged in prior to having kids, I didn't realize until after the fact that it was more of an option for me to feel that way than it was after and i'm not saying that's with everybody because there's some people who are clinically in a position that it is beyond their control but i didn't realize for me how much of it was self-pity for me at that time right until i was thrust into an environment where i had no choice but to cope i was like now you have no choice you have to take care of the kid you know i mean you can't get shit faced because right. what if he chokes on a pee and you got to go to the not hospital about, right it's not about you, know, you. it's yeah. about yeah so i think a lot of my past work um played into what i still hopefully uh am singing about which is just like holy shit things are awesome wow holy cow i'm really dumb but i think that uh at that point it was also uh compounded with a with a type of uh, uh maturity that i needed to learn and now clearly that's, that's, uh, that's fantastic man i mean uh I think we have this privilege of having music in our life, you know, to, to deal with that kind of stuff. Uh, exactly. You know, of course you have directions from doctors and maybe some medicine here and there, but uh, music, it helps us to deal with ourselves, which is the way to cure anything. You know, mm -hmm. it, ha it has to come from inside, you know, at least th is this the way I see it, you know, it's not expecting stuff to, to, to happen outside to, to resolve things inside, you know, and, uh, for instance, I, I quit alcohol. It's, it's been four months now, you know, and I, I realized that uh, I didn't drink every day. I didn't have like a, a, a chemical problem, let's say, you know, but uh, it, it was getting in, in on the way of my life. You know, I, I realized that I everything I chose in my life to go to a restaurant, to go to a movie, to a theater or to to find a place to travel. Alcohol was involved in my choice, you know. And that really scared me. <laughs> it was, what the fuck, man? You know, everything I do, I have to put alcohol first, you know, to, 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 to choose. Oh, let's go to this place. I'm not going to Disneyland because they don't serve beer. You know, that kind of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you lose a, a momentum with your family, 
with your friends and stuff because you're concerned about having a beer or having a fucking wine, you know? Well, so, this is uh, what when and, you think and music and music really helped uh, uh, me deal with that. And, you know, people around music, like having a chat with you and Derek and stuff, it's, it's really uh, amazing, you know? Yeah. Well, this is why I think it's interesting as well when people, uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll preface this statement by saying, I fully get why people love certain aspects of, of an artist's career. You know, they think this record, I have an emotional connection to it to the point that when I hear it, it elicits a reaction that's very special to me. And so I would never take that away from somebody. But at the same time, like you just said, the whole purpose of music from the point of view of people who are creating it is yeah. that we're trying to work our work our shit out. You know, exactly. it's like we're yeah. trying to get to the point where we're better than we were, hopefully, unless you're right. yeah. self-destructive yeah. by nature. And as a result of that, progress is inevitable. And you're going to find people that that resent you for for changing or resent you for progressing or or, or whatever. But ultimately, um, as I had even mentioned when we were talking about where my lineage of music came from and as, you know, from somebody who was maybe emotionally stunted, it gave me an avenue to explore these things that without... Andres is out. He's just like... <laughs> yeah, he's just like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's this like... It talking. gives you an avenue to explore things that... Um, I often think that maybe the goal of any musician is to run out of things to write about. So at the end, you're just like, well, what are you going to write about? Like, I'm done, dude. Exactly. Fucking nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> like, well, you, what are you pissed yeah. off about now? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good, right? But, right? Robin Gaia. Devin, I'm autistic, and your music helps helps me a lot. Thank, thank you, Robin. It's awesome. Thanks, Robin. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, autism is... Awesome. Autism is an interesting thing as well to to contend with as an artist because it's it's got some very um, you know my my kids on the spectrum and I know a bunch of people who are as well and I think there's a lot of wonderful things that can come from that unfortunate struggle in a way as well. So uh, uh, good luck with that, Robin. Awesome man. Yeah, Robin. Rockaholic kid. Music can bring you down a dark pet. Agree. Yep. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Specifically, if like we sure. were saying earlier, you're not um, paying attention to what your intent, your intentions are, because if you've got a if you've got a bullhorn and you're got a lot of people who listen to what you say, I think you've got to be confident enough with why you're doing things to be able to say it loudly, or else. And I'm sure you guys have been in this position too. You end up saying things or writing things that you're just like, oh fuck, this is just drawing a bunch of shit to me that I didn't want, right? Yeah. Especially nowadays, you know, Definitely. anything. Yes, totally. Yeah, totally. But, but it's uh, interesting what you said about like the whole. Oh, no, go on. No, no, go ahead. Oh, no, what Andres was saying, you know, like the drinking thing, you know, it's like it, it stopped with me before even talking with Andres around the same time. Or it's just like yeah. weighing out certain things and that feeling of, of, of what is what good does this do for me? You know, like the best things that I do are actually when I'm not drinking <laughs> you know those things were like the best things in my life the best events the best things and it's like why not have more of that you know and it was in the depression was something that came more and more as i got older and older from drinking and uh and, and just feeling it you know like mentally afterwards and just not wanting that feeling anymore and just just like why am i doing this you know and it's just such a release you know like you were saying being able to talk to people to hang out with people or the very positive attitude, you know, and, and this is all something that really helps in the creativity tremendously. It's hard at this particular period of time though, as well, right? Because there is so much uncertainty and so much fear. And, and again, because we are all for the most part, uh, maybe not isolated, but more so isolated than, than, uh, we have been, there's this tendency to just default to our devices and this, omnipresent sort of tsunami of fear that we're being uh fed based on yeah. the fact that you know people are profiting off of us just being right terrified yeah, and constantly yeah. like checking it that alcohol right. becomes this very um alluring way to cope because it's like you trade Absolutely. 15 minutes of of you know a serotonin rush for like three days of just like, oh, fuck, man, I can't believe that happened, <laughs> right? But I mean, I think that's awesome, guys. I think it's amazing. And I don't think yeah. that that is an isolated thing. There's a lot of people in our industry that I've talked to recently that are just like, hey, man, now that I'm confronted with myself, 
to the exclusion exactly. of the identity that yeah. I created with the band and all this other exactly. stuff. It's like, yeah, man, it's like, I got to get my shit together. Yeah. No, it's great yep. uh, because uh, music really helps a, a lot, you know, that kind of stuff. And to put your mind and your, your body. I've been working uh, uh, like crazy, you know, as Devin was saying, going after uh, projects and, and stuff that was waiting, you know, for some time really to, to put some energy and to develop, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I've been using my time very positively like that as well. And... And I took this decision to to quit drinking before this quarantine happened. It was like yeah, two weeks yeah. before, you know. Huh. It was not. It, it doesn't have any connection with what what happening right now. And 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 I feel great, you know. I, I'm not uh, going to a struggle. I I I go to whatever family meetings here and stuff, which we usually on Sunday have a wine and stuff. And people still drinking, and I'm still doing my stuff, and I still talking about the same subjects and everything, you know. So. Uh, it feels great, you know. I, I don't feel like a, a different person just because I'm not drinking. <laughs> We're all about awesome. the same age too, aren't we? Like uh, I'm, I'm seven, fifty. Yeah. I'll be fifty-two in two weeks or so in August. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're you're how old are you there, Derek? I'm I'm not in the fifty club yet. I'm going to be joining that club next year. Me and you, I'm man. We'll link, we'll link arms and like sashay into it. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> but I think that there's also something to be said for this. This too. It's it's like. Uh, somebody said something uh, to me a few months back. It was like, right now is the best you're going to be for the rest of your life. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, Sounds no, good. I mean, like <laughs> physically or like, or like what have you. It's, you know, exercise I find is something that has been increasingly weird too, because, you know, exercising is super important. Yet yeah. my joints are starting to oh. just complain. I'm like, God, I got to yeah. modify how I'm taking care of myself here because my body is just like, dude, you are now, again, just about to hit 50 and things are not looking as good as they did when you were like 23. <laughs> did you ever have an uh, like an incident on stage that now comes back to oh. haunt you when it's like raining or something? You're just like, oh my God, I got this. I remember I screwed up my shoulder on stage. That was my leg. You remember Andreas, like the leg? We'd have oh, that yeah, yeah. with our leg. Kind what of a numbness. I still, I still have that going on sometimes. What yeah, happened? me too. It's like a numbness in the, in the right leg and the thigh. Like Andreas and I had the same area. On the same place. Yeah, the same place of the leg. Like, yeah. Kind of, yeah. It's weird. Maybe it's it something to do like a with a little bit numb. You've both been abducted. They've got like, uh, They've got big transmitters in both your right thighs. I hope so, man. Dude, let me know. If there's a place to sign Give up, me let up. me know. Yeah. I, my leg isn't numb. This sucks. <laughs> we can check. Yeah, the way you do it. Oh, here we go. The Andrik official. Yeah. Love how Devin okay. and Sap music progresses from each album. Lots of layers to both Empath and Quadra. What is a musical idea idea you haven't yet actualized? Peace uh, of mind. <laughs> nice question. I don't know. Whenever it comes, <laughs> I mean, Sepultura is, uh, is always very open, you know, to to collaborations. We work with uh, this French group, Tambour du Bronx, which is an amazing percussive group. That we even record a DVD of Rock and Rear. We play with Steve Vai. We play with this artist here in Brazil, Zé Ramalho. Uh, we play with orchestras, which is something that we 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 might you know work again you know in the near future. So, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a plan. You know, oh, I have to do this. We always keep our possibilities open, and and when we do festivals, especially now June, July in the European summer. The backstage area is the best place to to start collaborations. You know, I agree. that's where it happens uh, a, a chat, a, a, a exchange of phone or something. You know, with a, a producer or a other band member guy or something, and and it's really it happens like that. You know, very at least with in our case, we don't have managers working collaborations. You know, I mean, we we do that ourselves, and it has to be something very, uh, I don't know. Uh, natural you know not forcing a situation you know i had two questions for you andreas first off uh well number one more of a statement the uh, the whole problem with the backstage thing is a lot of it's pillow talk you know what i mean you're at the a festival i was like dude we're gonna yeah, put yeah, together a, a band well, we're gonna yeah, call ourselves course, yeah. we're gonna call ourselves <laughs> viscous piss 
and we're gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be awesome, man. Except I'll play bass. I'll play bass. That's what I'm gonna do, right? <laughs> but and then the other question I had was I'll play so, keyboards. Your keyboards? Sick. We need stage names. <laughs> I'm gonna be super diaper. But the uh I was gonna ask Andreas, what's the uh, concept of quadra about? Yeah, concept of quadra came when I started researching uh, 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 an idea for an album, a direction, you know, for the new album. And I started with numbers, numerology, algorithms, you know, and uh, I found this book called Quadrivium. Quadrivium talks about the, the four liberal arts, music, cosmology, geometry, and mathematics. You I know, have that it's book. Amazing. It's amazing. I have yeah, that it's book. Fantastic. Yep. And from there, you know, definitions of number, you know, number four, um it was very important really to build everything around quadra quadra is a it's a uh, portuguese word that means sports court you know like a basketball court or a tennis court you know where you have like a delimited space with a set of rules where the game takes place you know it's life itself i mean brazil is a quadra the schools i went you know the set of rules culture religion and everything, you know, I, I am a consequence or a victim of this information, you know. It doesn't matter if you if you go to Harvard or if you go to whatever. I mean, there's some people in Saudi Arabia or in Canada that's going to learn things in a different way, in a different perspective. And, you know, they're not wrong. They're just a consequence of the education they had. I mean, if you go to Saudi Arabia... And 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 see the situation of, of the, the the women, you know, and and uh, the family and the society. Looking from this side, you see, wow, this is really insane. But when you go there, it's nothing insane. It's just the way they are, you know. I mean, Quadra talks about that. I mean, we should respect the difference and not try to change people uh, as a doctrine, you know. I mean, for I'm sure that people look to Brazil and and see things that they cannot believe. And even as a Brazilian, I, I I agree with them. You know, we have things here that's crazy. You know, but that's the way we are. I mean, uh, and 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 when you have like stereotypes and concepts of what is a race, and for instance, I mean, black and white. Okay, it's it's um, it's aggressive enough. You know, why have yellow for uh, Asian people? I mean, it's it's really insane that kind of terminology, you know, that we have to have just to communicate to each other. We shouldn't have this kind of things, you know, and and stereotypes of what is a German, what is an American, what is a Brazilian, what is communist, what is fucking capitalist, what is the Republican, what is Democrat. I mean, it's all connect, it's all uh, concepts created and uh, and agreed about a certain uh, certain people. And uh, why we have the coin on the cover? Because money is the, the worst uh, thing that we invented, <laughs> you know, because it needs only two people to agree that a piece of paper have a certain value, you know, and then you create the whole society and the whole world around a piece of paper, an idea, which is today's not even paper. I mean, in Sweden, we don't use money anymore. You know, you go there, it's only cards. There's no money whatsoever. You know, they're trying to really to, to take. And it's everything it's here. It's not nothing physical, nothing real, you know. And people die for it. People kill for it. And and people, you know, put in different shelves. I, you're a millionaire. You're a fucking bum, you know. And how that's how we we, we catalog people, you know. Let Which me is, ask I you think this. it's totally horrible. Let me ask you this. What do you think the reason is that people are willing to go that far for an idea? Because they don't have any other choice. I mean, they are presented like that, you know. You are a Brazilian because you have to like football, soccer. You have to 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 like samba. Oh, you you like caipirinha. You know, we are forced since we are born to be that way. Because you have to like soccer, you have to like uh, caipirinha, you have to like churrasco, you have to like. This is the the Brazilian way of being, you know. And we don't know where it comes from, and we defend ideas. That we don't know where we come from. I mean, where we come from, right? Well, I think I think a lot of it as well is like as a as a species, we're evolutionarily at this weird crossroads where our where our ability to conceptualize is so much more than our ability to emotionally handle, in a sense. So we find that our identity gets so tied into 
what we believe and what we stand for that again like we had said earlier in absence of that we cease to exist which is you know the most fearful uh implication maybe, yeah but maybe Devin, this is the the way of being real you know what, what the buddhism say you know to take all right. the concepts away yeah. from your mind mm -hmm. you, you don't True. have a word to describe you know totally. nirvana they found this word nirvana but once you're there you're there you everything you mm -hmm. know i never reached that because i never worked that but that's the concept of no concept that's why and i always that's why, that's and then you are all not only a part of something you know that it's an uh, agreement so i keep thinking that that once you get to the point like that's why the goal for me well maybe not for me because i'm not particularly enlightened but i think it would be nice to get to the point where you're like i'm out of music to write about because all music is on some level specifically for those who have reached that state i would imagine would be a crude analogy for something like through my trip i'm like well through my you know middle class white canadian bias here's how i interpret that uh that moment of emotional significance it sounds like this it's like blah, 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 blah. it's got blast beats and enya or whatever but it's like i would like to think that you could get to the point uh where music you're just like yeah that doesn't make any sense to me the only thing that makes any sense is silence because in that is like potential as opposed to just you know the fear yeah, of but uh, but even silence you know you have to have a reference uh, of sound to 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 really uh, uh identify because if you are yeah. if you are born mm -hmm. in silence and live in silence you you don't have to define that mm -hmm. you know i mean the, the 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 my point is once you define one thing an, an apple or whatever a guitar you kill that thing you know you, you take away all the reality of it you know mm -hmm. because you depend on information and interpretation to make that thing real for you instead of living that thing you know instead of being a tree you know uh, i'm not a hippie by the way but you know it's like uh just like <laughs> i'm being batman like, <laughs> no being being like that you know you, you can feel everything because science and physics and philosophy you know they all go to that direction we are a totally. part of of everything of all totally, you know? dude we are on the same page my friend awesome <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're is it, are you guys patting each other that looked amazing like no no yeah i, I did that because <laughs> He said, "Awesome!" <laughs> and it looked like you. I expected to see your hand like, going. I see how there. I know. It's like <laughs> <Totally bad. laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was so good. It's like we're not isolating at all. Oh, I'm going in here, Andres. Yeah, gonna... yeah. Oh wait, I can't. All get... right. Uh, Woo -hoo. High five. I can't do it, man. I got no depth perception. Uh -oh. <laughs> right, just... uh, yeah, I'm like. Devin, I think yeah. we're on the, the end here. Thank you so much, man, for this. This has been an so amazing welcome. chat, man. Yeah, I agree, man. It's been so yeah, nice, absolutely. and it's an absolute honor to uh, to participate with you guys. And um, thank you so much for uh, for being who you are. It's amazing. The thank you, man. You Same a great attitude. A great of datitude. Did you hear that? <laughs> the scene owes you a gret of datitude. <laughs> Fantastic. The gret is a small datitude. amount and dataism yeah. or something. I don't know. I got a pee. <laughs> datitude. Like, datitude. I got a pee like. like so no, you got to jam. We're going to jam. This. Yeah. Oh, we got to pee after we jam. Pee after now we jam. jam yeah. mask. After we jam. All right. Go and to the video. Don't miss the shirt. I got the shirt, man. I'm ready to play some metal, boys. It sounds Let's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity, man. I'm sorry yeah, I sat down you. for it. Next time I'll stand. What do you, come on, come on. Come Next right. time we'll be on stage doing that together, hopefully. All right, I'm bringing the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. The All shirt. right, so you playing it now? Do I uh, do I stay on or hang up? I'll watch it because. You watch hey, it, yeah. You can watch Bruno, it. Bruno, where's the logo? <laughs> Where is he? There he is. Yeah. Look at it like that. Yeah. There he is. Talking logo. Damn. I'm here. So want to thank everybody that was watching here. It was amazing. Just go to sepultura.com.br slash sepulquarta and you will be able to see this killer version of Mask. mask. Thank you so much, everybody. See you next Wednesday Keep on the next mask on. Wear your fucking yeah, mask, you bastards. Let's do Wear this. It. <laughs> Ciao.